Good morning and welcome back to our lecture room. Ngayong araw na ito, pag-usapan natin ang isang katanungan ng ating subscriber. Ang sabi niya, Attorney, ang lupa po na, ma- na nabuo sa gilid ng ilog, sino po ba ang may-ari nito? Maraming salamat sa question na yan and I'll give you an example. Okay, here is a picture. If you will notice here, itong arrow na ito, yan po yung land formation. And ito po yung boundary ng lupa na doon sa other side eh pagmamay-ari ng isang, let us say, titled land, tituladong lupa ng isang may-ari. And ang tanong is, sino ba ang may-ari nitong na-form na land? Kasi hindi naman dito titulado eh, na-form itong land dahil sa pamamaraan ng tiyatawag nating akresyon. Okay. So, bago natin i-discuss kung sino may ari, pag-usapan muna natin anong klase itong land formation na ito. Alright. Itong land formation na ito po, eh, tinatawag itong alubium. Okay? Alubium, if you'll notice, at the top there, sa may old shore, na nag-form siya, no? And, ang definition po ng alubium is the soil deposited or added to the land adjoining the bank of the river and gradually received as an effect of the current of waters. Ibig sabihin, yung dahan-dahan po na daloy ng tubig ng river is that nagkakaroon po ng soil deposit. Yung soil deposit na yan, ang tawag niyan is alubium. Okay? And ang proseso po para magkaroon po ng soil deposit, na katulad ditong alubium, is through yung tatawag nating accretion. Okay? Ano po ba itong accretion? It is an act or process by which the land bordering a stream, yung lupa daw ng tabi ng river, or body of water, increases its area by action of the river current or other natural process. So, nag-increase daw yung lupa dahil doon sa process ng accretion na yon. At yung lupa na na-increase or na-deposit or soil deposit, ang pangalan po niyan is alluvium. Okay? All right. Now, let us proceed. In this particular scenario, ang tanong natin is sino bang may-ari ng soil deposit na yon or yung alluvium? Now, sa civil code po natin, ang sabi ng batas, Article 457, to the owners of lands adjoining the banks of rivers belong the accretion which which they gradually receive from the effects of the currents of the river. So, ibig sabihin, kung yung may-ari ng lupa na yan, titled owner siya or hindi titled owner, basta siya ang may-ari ng lupa na yan, ang tawag sa kanya is riparian owner. Kasi sa gilid niya, sa gilid niya is may formation ng lupa. Ang gilid niya is yung river. And sa river na yon nagkaroon ng formation or yung tiyatawag nating soil deposit na alubium. So, ang riparian owner po sa wikang Tagalog ay ang may-ari ng baybayin o gilid ng ilog. Okay. May-ari po ng lupa na sa gilid ng ilog. yon yun po ang definition. And siya rin po ang may-ari nitong uh, soil deposit na ito na tiyatawag nating alubium. Take note that it should be gradual imperceptible. Yung dandahan po siyang nafoform doon, hindi po nakikita sa human eyes natin na nafoform siya. Through the passage of time, sa katagala ng panahon, nagkaroon po ng soil deposit. Yun po ang ibig sabihin po ng akresyon na pwedeng pagmamayarian ng riparian owner na katabi nung may-ari ng lupa na katabi ng ilog. Yan po ang ibig sabihin. Kasi baka kasi magdating ang time, meron pong mag- mag-occupy sa property na yan at kayo po irparian owner, pinabayaan ninyo kasi sabi nyo, hindi naman yan kasali sa boundary ko, baka sa kanya naunahan niya ako. Wrong! Do not forget that you are the owner. So, merong act na pumasok ganyan, i-exclude nyo po sila, no? And you tell them, I am the reparian owner and you have to get out. Kung hindi magpayag, edi ibarangay nyo or hindi pa rin, you go to court to protect your rights and interests. Okay? You can claim and ang question is, since you are the owner, sabi ng batas, Article 457, e eh, pwede po ba itong patituluhan? Ipatitulo e, po natin 
at ang process po natin is yung confirmation of imperfect title. Kasi kayo ang may-ari, i-perfect na natin para magkaroon ng titulo at mapasok po tayo sa tiyatawag nating Torrent System. But, take note that this riparian owner na ito, taniman mo kagad ng plug. Huwag ka na magtagal. Akin ito, ako ang may-ari ng tabi ng lupa, ng, nasa tabi ng ilog, akin din ito. Ganyan po ang gagawin natin. Before we proceed with the process of titling, may pakita lang ako sa inyo, no? And this photo is courtesy of uh, A.V. Luna sa semanticscholar.org. Nakuha ko ito. Uh, makita mo dito yung in 2003, uh, meron ng uh, alluvial deposit. Then after three years, nagkaroon na po ng vegetation. I'm just showing na yung ibig sabihin itong alluvial deposit, pwede ito siyang magkaroon ng vegetation, mga pananim, mga uh, mag-grow ang mga plants dyan. Kaya dapat po pwedeng angkinin at maging uh, maging part ng lupa ng riparian owner. So take note, what I'm showing here is vegetation. Pero yung pag-form niyan at pagkaroon ng alluvial deposit, ang tagal po, hindi po 3 years. It may take 15 to 20 to 30 years po sa haba po ng panahon. Alright? So take note po yan, gradual, dandahan, imperceptible, hindi nakikita, at matagal na panahon due to the currents or current of water, effects of the running water of the river. Okay. So, ang batas po natin para magpatitulo po ng lupa na yan is Republic Act 11.573. Now, Section 6 ng 11.573, inamyendahan po ang Section 14. At sa pag-amyenda po sa Section 14, ang sabi dito, sino ang pwedeng mag-apply? Okay. Sabi ng batas, sayin natin, The following persons may file at any time in the proper regional trial court in the province where the land is located. No? Ah, uh, one, two, three. Hindi tayo interesado sa one because we've discussed that in our previous lecture na. Let us go under number two. Ito. So, paragraph two is very important. Those who have acquired ownership of private lands, number one, or abandoned riverbeds, number two, or accretion under the provisions of existing law. So, yung pinag-usapan natin na accretion, na ang lupa is alluvium, soil deposit, and the process of accretion, yan po ang pinag-usapan natin ngayon. Alright, let us proceed. Since it is to be filed in the regional trial court, eh klaro po, judicial titling tayo. No? Process po para mapatituluan is through judicial titling. Alright, Now, in judicial titling, take note that it is a judicial proceeding. Claro, judicial proceeding siya. And it is filed with the regional trial court where the property is located, sought to be applied for for a for a grant by the government of, for a title, no? And so regional trial court siya i file. It is the second level court. And it's a higher court because it is higher than the municipal trial court in cities. And adversarial and speedy kasi meron pong pwedeng mag-oppose. Uh, number one po na nag-oppose yung solicitor general at saka yung mga various department or government agencies na interesado doon sa property. Speedy po dahil meron pong period po sinasabi ang batas for the judge to decide on this particular kind of uh, judicial titling. And The rules to be followed is PD 1529 and the rules of court in supplementary uh, character or manner. All right, and it is in rem. Ibig sabihin po in rem, it binds the whole world. Kung meron pong decision ang korte, ibig sabihin po is that it binds the entire world that this person whom I decreed to be the owner of the property is the owner of the property and this is noticed to everyone that he is the owner to the exclusion of other people. Yan po ibig sabihin. So, kung it is a judicial proceeding, kailangan na naman natin si Attorney Juan de la Cruz. Ayan, Attorney Juan de la Cruz. And nag-argue siya. And kailangan po natin ng preponderance of evidence and or clear and convincing evidence para ating makonvince si judge to issue a, uh, to declare that uh, your title is perfect 
So, confirm ang imperfect title mo, directing the LRA to issue a decree and issue a certificate of title. So, with that, if ma-prove natin yan, magkaroon po tayo ng titulo. Alright, let's proceed. No? Uh, dito po sa Regional Trial Court, ang pinakaunang gagawin nito is to uh, to have it published. Yung notice of hearing na ina-issue ng judge. Kasi the moment you file a petition or application in court, ang order of hearing nakasabi doon is that, okay, finding the application filed by Pedro Reyes, the same is sufficient and therefore let copies of this order be published by the Commissioner of Land Registration and mailed to the interested person and posted in conspicuous places. Yan. Ang tawag po niyan is uh, kailangan mo establish ang jurisdictional requirements. Kasi kung without which, hindi makomply yung tatlo na yan, wala pong jurisdictional requirements ang court. So, <clears throat> as an applicant, you have to make sure na complied everything yan. So, publication once in the newspaper of general circulation and in the official gazette by, gazette by the uh, Commissioner of Land Registration and mailing to those interested persons, yung mga adjoining landowners, plus the various government agency, the Office of the Store General, kung DAR, kung merong tenant issues, tapos uh, Bureau of uh, Aquatic and Fisheries, kung adjoining the riverbed, katulad nitong example natin. Okay? And uh, posting requirement, kailangan yung notice of hearing ipopost dun sa city in all conspicuous places, including po ang barangay hall when the, where the property is situated. Yan, okay. And after that, uh, before the hearing, i-determine niya ng judge kung meron ba proof of publication, meron ba opposition from the Solicitor General, kasi sometimes the Solgen will say, well, that is owned by the, by the state. That is not a considered as a, an accretion. It is not considered as an alluvial deposit because that is part of a, the property of the state. It is actually a dried up riverbed. But I argument sila, no? So they will try to oppose your application. Or there might be other private persons would say, no, kami po ang dapat maka-apply, kami po yung reparian owner. So may iba-ibang style, no? So, and if there will be no opposition, there will be what we call order of default, yung sa number three. Then, during the hearing proper po, sabi natin, speedy hearing, uh, 90 days to decide. From the time, there is an order that it is now submitted for decision. Hindi kasama yung during the time, nag-present ng evidence, pagkatapos yung applicant present evidence, tapos yung kabila naman, nag-present din ng evidence, tapos course examination. But iba yung process na yun. Kailangan, pagtapos na lahat na presenta ng evidence, it is the 90 days mag count from the time it is now submitted for decision. Okay. And then, pagkatapos dyan, magkaroon ng judgment confirming title kung approve ang application mo. Pag denied, eh, denied, then you, but you could still appeal to the Court of Appeals. No? And supposing na confirm nga, eh, mag order na ngayon ang Regional Trial Court na sa Land Registration Authority to issue the decree. So, ang Land Registration Authority Authority would issue a decree and as well as to issue a certificate of title under the applicant. Ayan. So, meron ka na ang titulo doon sa soil deposit or yung, yung alluvial uh, deposit na nandoon sa tabi ng property mo, gilid ng ilog. Okay? So, yun po yun. So, but uh, before we uh, end, I would like to discuss first to you Ito pong uh, dried up riverbed and abandoned riverbed. Kasi baka kasi malito kayo. No? Ito pong dried up riverbed po, yung natuyo na na, ano, na na river, hindi po siya nag-change ng course. Ito po, hindi nyo po ito pwedeng mapatituluhan. Because it is owned by the government under the principle of regalian doctrine that anything uh, in the anything is owned by the government no under the regalian doctrine principle and that itong dried up riverbed po hindi po no matter how long in possession po kanyan hindi yun po nyo mapatituluhan yan however the only way na mapatituluhan yan kung i-declare po by law or by proclamation that is already alienable and disposable by the government pag 
na-declare po siya eligible and disposable at matagal nyo nang inaposesyonan yan, eh, pwede nyo na pa-applyan ng title. Okay? So, take note of that. And, what I'm talking about itong abandoned riverbed versus abandoned riverbed. Okay, I will cite an example. So, gamitin pa rin natin si, si Jane at saka si Pedro Reyes. Remember this, uh, guys, yung sa... Uh, tax declaration, nagbenta ng lupa si Jane kay Pedro Reyes, no? So, take note that here, uh, si Jane de la Cruz, kung meron pong formation ng land through na uh, accretion at magkaroon ng alluvial deposit, siya po yung riparian owner. Pwede po siya mag-claim dyan, right? Kaya nga, ganun din on the side of Pedro Reyes, kapag merong formation ng land through accretion, merong alluvial deposit doon, siya rin po ang pwede mag-apply ng title niyan dahil siya ay raparian owner. Para silang dalawa kasi gilid-gilid. No? So, wag niyo pong babayaan na merong makaposesyon dyan sa sa side na yan. Baka kasi mapabayaan niyo tapos dumating yung time ma, ma-acquire nila ang ownership noon through acquisitive prescription. Remember, we have discussed that. no? So, Be careful with this uh, situation. Pag magkita nyo meron kayo, kahit gaano konti, 100 square meters, 200 square meters lang, applyan nyo na po ng title or claim nyo kaagad or bakuran nyo na rin. Alright. So, but this is what I'm going to discuss with you. Itong situation na ito. Wherein, for some time, biglang nagkaroon ng change of course of river. No? Natural course, natural course ng pag-change ng direction ng river. Nangyayari po yan, no? Uh, change in the course of river. Uh, in fact, uh, minsan, meron nga ang situation na dahil sa lakas ng ano, biglang nagkaroon ng, ng change na lakas ng ulan at bagyo. Yan. Okay. Now, the question is, dahil nakunan po dito ng lupa si Pedro Reyes, meron pong nabakante. Ito po siya. No? Siyempre, nag-change, merong natuyo. Ang question, sino ang pwedeng mag- uh, Sino may ari ng lupa? Sino pwede mag-apply ng pa-title nito? Si Jane or si Pedro? Sabi ni Jane, ako. Kasi ako ang katabi. Ako ang riparian owner. Sabi ni attorney, kung sino yung katabi, di, yun ang pwede mag-apply. And the answer is no. Dahil ang nawalan po si uh, Pedro Reyes, siya po ang dapat bigyan. Yan ang po ang principle niyan. That's why, na-abandon po yung riverbed na yun by the change in the course of river. Either gradually or by immediate course not because of uh, acts of God and therefore Pedro Reyes owns the property at pwede po niyang mapatitiluhan niyan po under judicial titling. Now, if you like my video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell para naman ma-update kayo sa ating mga video presentations. No? So, take note that uh, we are doing this to educate uh, All people about real estate matters, about property, para naman makatulong po tayo. So, with that, thank you, danke, and hope to see you again next time. See you soon.